Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you haven't already done so. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the news for this episode. Starting off over at CNET.com, the Linux Foundation fuels open source drone efforts. The folks who help bring you the Linux operating system today want to bring you better drones tomorrow. Release the drones. The Linux Foundation, which sponsors some development of the wildly, widely used operating system, announced the new open source drone code software project. Drone code brings a formal structure and oversight to two existing open source drone projects, the APM slash Ardu pilot autopilot software and the PX4 drone hardware. Such formalities may seem like a bother for the freewheeling world of open source projects, but they can make companies, universities, governments, and others more comfortable that a project is safe to adopt. Organizers expect drone code to help encourage drone use in environmental research, humanitarian work, and search and rescue. So, pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. You know, it's it's nice to uh, get uh, in, uh, start getting some standards. Standards are a good thing for the most part. I mean, you can over standard stuff, but generally if you want you know more than just a couple of people to adopt it you do kind of have to standardize from zdnet.com red hat enterprise linux 6.6 arrives not everyone who uses red hat enterprise red hat enterprise linux is ready to leap to version 7 so um as a res- result um, Red Hat has released Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.6. So uh, the author of the uh, blog post here, Stephen J. Von Nichols, we talk about a lot of the stuff that he posts. He's a pretty good guy. Um, basically says he can sum up Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.6 in one phrase. Some version 7 features have been backported to 6.6. Otherwise, it's the same Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6.x that you should expect it uh, to be. So three main areas of uh, of improvement are performance, system administration, and, (coughs) sorry about that, uh, virtualization. So uh, pretty cool. Definitely check it out, especially if you are a 6.x user, something you want to look into. From PC World, uh, the... There's a story here on the shell shock bash bug that we've. Uh, <coughs> Oi, allergies are going nuts. <coughs> Previously reported on. Sorry for sneezing in your ear there twice. Uh, the Linux botnet uh, mayhem spreads through shell shock exploits. Shell shock continues to reverberate. Attackers are exploiting recently discovered vulnerabilities in the bash command line interpreter to in order to infect Linux servers with a sophisticated malware program known as Mayhem. Uh, Mayhem was discovered earlier this year and was thoroughly analyzed by researchers from Russian internet firm Yandex. It gets installed through a PHP script that attackers upload on servers via compromised FTP passwords, website vulnerabilities, or brute force site administration credentials. Mayhem's main component is a malicious uh, ELF, which is an executable and linkable format to library file that, after installation, downloads additional plugins and stores them in a hidden and encrypted file system. The plugins enable attackers to use the newly infected service to attack and comp- compromise additional sites. So uh, this thing is wreaking major, major, major havoc. So definitely uh, get your bash upgraded if you have not already done so. I know that's an exercise I went through my FreeBSD home server. I uh, went and got my, <laughs> went and upgraded the bash, did a bunch of other stuff, but uh, definitely something you want to look into. From LinuxGizmos.com, machine vision com and cameras go Linux. Vision Components has launched two 
two uh, Linux-based smart machine vision cameras and a COM built around a Xilinx Zinc system on a chip, each supporting up to 4.2 megapixel video. Over the last decade, smart cameras for machine vision have been uh, transitioning from DSPs to systems that combine DSPs or FPGAs with uh, ARM or x86 processors running Linux. The latest to join the Linux camp is Edelgen, Germany-based machine vision manufacturer Vision Components. With its latest VCZ cameras, um, they've switched from a DSP-based system to a Tuxified ARM slash FPGA combo. So pretty awesome. Definitely check it out. I'm not sure it's something that I personally would use, but I know that there are definitely uh, situations out there where people would use that sort of thing. So pretty cool. Also from Linux Gizmos, Wind River Linux taps Yocto 1.7, adds a binary option. Wind River announced a new version of Wind River Linux based on Yocto Project 1.7 code and featuring new binary deployment and security assessment options. Intel subsidiary Wind River announced Wind River Linux 7 at the Linux Foundation's Combination Linux Con plus Cloud Open plus Embedded Linux Conference Europe being held this week in Dusseldorf, Germany. The latest version of the leading commercial Linux distribution was upgraded to version 6 with Yocto Project 1.5 a year ago at the same event. So pretty awesome. Uh, definitely check it out. From internetnews.com, uh, I saw this story and thought I'd share it with all of you. 3.8 million Raspberry Pi computers sold. Oh my. I own three Raspberry Pis, two Bs, and one B+. Plus, and many people I know also own one or more Pis. All those Pi add up to... And now the Raspberry Pi Foundation says that it has sold 3.8 million units. That's a whole lot of Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi was never supposed to be a massive volume seller. It was supposed to be a teaching and educational tool to help kids and adults interested in development and maker culture. Well, uh, it's turned out to be a lot more uh, useful than the original developers original, uh, originally thought it would be. And so they have sold a lot of of them and there's a lot of stuff that a, a raspberry pi can enable when you just need a basic you know a, a little basic board that's got some basic io you know raspberry pi is the way to go uh linux is now supported by netflix via google chrome that's right users can now finally stream videos from netflix over computers running linux more most importantly there is no need for you to install wine change your browser agent or make any other changes at all the only thing that you need to do is download and install Google Chrome 38 and log into your Netflix account. The browser can easily be downloaded from google.com slash chrome. This is because the open source Chromium browser is not going to work. However, considering that Chrome 38 comes with built-in support for HTML5 video playback with DRM restrictions that previously prevented users from being able to stream video, while using a Linux browser, have been removed. So this is awesome. If you are a Linux user and you want to be able to watch your Netflix videos on your computer, definitely go download Google Chrome and that, and uh, with uh, starting with version 38, you can do it. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in our show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.